Hi, you're welcome to this webinar. And today we're going to be talking about setting up for voiceover. And when I say setup, I mean particularly setting up your equipment. But let's go on to the plan first. So the plan for today is pretty simple. First of all, we're going to have a bit of an introduction so you can meet me and my team. Next, we're going to explore what equipment you need for voiceover and why. After that, we're going to look at some mindsets you need for success in this business because, you know, you've got to reorient your mind as well. Then we're going to look specifically at your um, equipment and where you can go to buy things and the choices and shopping list you have when it comes to buying your equipment. And then finally, we'll look at your particular setup um, to get you ready to go and how you know you're ready to go. All right, let's go ahead. So first of all, um, a bit about me. My name is Aria Pampa. I've been a voiceover artist for the past seven or so years, and I have loved every moment of it. Absolutely loved it. I I've done it part time and now I'm currently doing it full time and it's great. And when I say full time, I mean, it's the main source it's my main source of income, but it also gives me time to pursue other interests, which I'm pretty excited about. So, um, yeah, voiceover has been a blessing and I'm hoping it can be a blessing to you, too. So just to give you a bit of a background of uh, my previous work, I've worked for many high profile brands from Google to NGOs like the United Nations, the World Bank. I've also done audiobooks for different authors. I've also done voiceovers for animation and gaming. So as the general voiceovers for commercials, for e-learning, uh, all sorts. Okay. And then I'm a personal coach, uh, personal voiceover coach to other people who are looking to get into the voiceover industry and who are looking to level up their game in the industry. Um, so let's dive into the equipment you're going to need. So the general setup for a voiceover is first of all, the microphone, that's very important. Then we've also got the mic stand, so what the microphone will stand on. Um, then a few other things, depending on whether you go for a USB mic or a an, or an XLR mic. Then you've got your headphones, you've got your audio interface, which if you're using an XLR mic is what you need to plug your microphone to before you can then plug that into the computer. And that gives you more control over the gain and a few other things. Then obviously you need a computer to record with. Some people record with their phones, but in this tutorial, I'm gonna be showing you more about using your computer for recording. And then very importantly, but sometimes gets overlooked is your recording environment. So not just recording in a room with many bare walls and having a lot of reflections. No, no, no. You've got to record in an environment that gives you good sound. And when I say good sound, I'm referring to recordings without many reflections and in a place that's as quiet as possible. So we're only hearing your voice and not hearing the sound of maybe other equipment in the room, such as electronic devices or the fridge humming here and there or people in in the neighborhood, that sort of thing. So you wanna avoid that. Okay, and let's quickly touch on mindsets before I go back into um, talking about your studio environment. So the mindset I want you to have in this is that done is better than perfect. Now, what do I mean by that? I mean, I want to get you recording as soon as possible. Don't wait until you have the perfect gear. Don't wait until you feel like you have the perfect setup. I want you to start recording so that you can see where you are and you can also track your progress as you're going along. There's no point learning about voiceovers in your head. It's a, it's a skill that you need to practice to get better at and keep improving and then be able to audition later. That's the goal. And well, the final goal actually is to get jobs coming from it, but be able to audition at least at the beginning then practice makes progress. What I mean by that is not pr practice makes perfect. We're not looking for perfection. We're looking for progress. So you're going to be better each time you practice. If you, if you practice deliberately and focus on areas that you need to improve on with each, each piece of practice that you do. There's an experiment that has happened in the past where students were asked to, I think, create clay pots. And one group was told to make the perfect clay pot and the other was told to practice and just make many iterations of it. And it turns out that the group that was told to create many iterations actually created greater, be more beautiful looking pots than those who were told to just create one perfect looking pot. And why? This was because they got to practice and get better as they, as they created more and more pots and they kept improving with each one. So that's the approach I want you to have when it comes to voiceover. Take the approach of practice makes progress. You need to keep doing and keep improving that way. And then working on the feedback from what you do and then improving on that. Then there comes documenting your learning. It's always really encouraging when you can see where you were and where you are right now. You know, those before and after uh, photos or before and after things. But to, in order to get that, you're going to need to 
actually document in some way where you were before and where you are now. Documenting may mean you recording something without any training and then recording something after a bit of training and seeing what difference that makes. For example, also varying your setup and recording and seeing if you have any differences in sound or the way you deliver, that sort of thing. Documenting and then showing your work is really good. And also by keeping examples of your work, it means that you're also building something that you could potentially take from to form your portfolio. We can talk about that in another lesson. So now when it comes to your environment setup, it's very important to reduce echoes, like I said. So let me explain to you the concept of um, sound damping. So sound damping is about reducing the reflections in the room. Now, the recording here that I'm using, because I'm recording straight from my laptop, is likely to not sound as good as if I had used a voiceover microphone. Now, in using a voiceover microphone, there are a lot of things that also need to change. So beyond the voiceover microphone, you've also got the fact that there are probably a lot of reflections in my voice right now. So in my recording, rather. And that's to do with the fact that the space I'm recording in is not a treated space. Now, what do we mean about a treated space? A treated space is a space that has had some treatment in it, which then reduces the likelihood of echoes and sounds bouncing off bare walls or um, bouncing off different surfaces. You can achieve that in different ways. The most basic way is literally to work with materials that have a lot of depth to them, so are not hard, flat surfaces. So examples of this could be pillows, for example, pillows, working in a closet that's full of clothes, for example. I, have, I think those are two, two ways to start off, first of all. So blankets, pillows, clothes, that sort of thing. And then setting up in a sort of pillow fort sort of formation. I'll give you a link. You can go and search on Google Images to see the examples of different pillow forts that are being used. And you'll see how people have set up their studio that way. And what you, sh what you should do, a quick test for you or a quick way to take action on this would be for you to actually try and set one up literally quickly use pillows like your pillows that you um, use to sleep or take them from your couches in the living room just set them up in a sort of triangular formation a pillow fort formation and then try recording something in that pillow fort now when i say try recording something i'm not asking you to do this after you've bought all your equipment i'm saying literally now just get your microphone so when i say microphone i'm literally referring to your phone your your uh, smartphone just record yourself speaking outside of that environment and then record yourself speaking with a phone within that environment so within the pillow fort or your closet with clothes and see if you notice any difference in sound a good way to notice the difference as well is by clapping when you clap when you clap like that both inside the environment and outside of the environment you'll notice a difference in sound if we move on up to the next level would be to look at a portable vocal booth now i've got a booth like this and i use this a lot both when i'm not traveling and when i'm traveling just because I get a consistent sound and um, it works so well for traveling and the, in, it's got a, a quick setup literally i can set this up in like 30 seconds five ten seconds even um which then means that it's quick for me to kind of get in and just get going with the recording now a setup like this will set you back um a few a few hundred um, pounds or dollars but for me it's definitely been worth it and i've made my money back from it and i pay for it using money that i earned from voiceover so it is it is doable um, now, as you can see in here, there's quite a lot of um, padding on the inside. So the white, the white surface you can see there is um, is acoustic, is made of acoustic uh, material, so acoustic uh, blankets in a sense. And just make sure that your sound sounds um, damp and not um, and not and reduces the number of reflections that happen in there. Now, one thing to bear in mind though is that this booth is not soundproof. It reduces it may reduce the amount of noise from ex external noise coming in, but it's not completely soundproof. So just bear that in mind. So you want us to record in a quiet place. Now, if you want to upgrade to the next level, you're looking at a vocal booth um, or a whisper room in particular. Now, these whisper rooms are made in such a way that they not only um, provide sound damping, but they also provide um, soundproofing, which reduces the amount of, of um, noise from external noise that gets into the space. And that means that you can have an isolated space where you can record in and you don't have to worry too much about sounds coming from out from outside. But of course, um, that will set you back another pretty penny if you decide to go that far. But to start with, you don't have to spend money. If you're just starting up and you just wanna just test this thing out, you don't have to start off with spending money on a whisper room. You can literally start with what you have in your house, which are blankets, clothes, and pillows. 
Okay, so just a quick recap on your recording environment setup. You want it to be quiet. You want to set up a situation or a space that has good sound damping so you're not having reflections. And you also want to be careful about the recording sounding too bassy. If you find that your recording sounds too bassy, maybe move around a little bit within your recording space to reduce the amount of bass and deep and low level um, sound that you're getting. Okay, then also remember to record from, to record away from sources of noise. So humming electronics, um, and that includes the noise fan of your computer. So if your computer is noisy, you may want to put your computer outside of your recording space and maybe use an external screen for your script. So reading your script. So for example, a way I do that is that I have my laptop outside of the recording um, environment. So outside of the booth. And then on the inside, I use my iPad. So iPad on the inside, laptop on the outside. And that way I don't get the laptop fan noise coming into the recording because that just adds an extra level of noise that's not really easy to remove in post. So it's better to just try and take care of these things as early in the chain as possible. Next, you want to avoid things like street noise. So try and record away from windows and, and doors. Then also try and avoid noises in the house. So it might mean, for example, recording at night or at times when the house is not busy or the house is quite quiet. So just bear that in mind. Also be careful of the sound of um, radiators. So particularly um, gas radiators that, that, pass, um, that pass gas through the house to warm it up. Be careful about those because sometimes they also add their own a little bit of a little bit of noise here and there. So just bear that in mind. Okay, so let's talk about a few things that you need to know when it comes to recording or getting your equipment. People ask different questions. Okay, should I get a condenser mic or a dynamic microphone? Um, condenser microphones capture more of the whole sound, right? It doesn't miss out too many doesn't miss out as many frequencies as maybe a dynamic microphone does. But the downside with that, you could say potentially, is the fact that it literally captures everything. And um, you may, it's if you're not in an environment that's well treated, you may get sounds recorded from far away. So noises on the street, humming electronics, that sort of thing. But the, in terms of quality of sound, condenser microphones are better. And usually for voiceover, you're gonna be looking more to go towards the condenser than the dynamic microphone. However, something I do wanna tell you is that, look, I want you to get started on your recording. You can always improve, you can always make progress and get better. You can also get, you can always upgrade your equipment later on. The important thing is to get started. But if you can, and you're looking to invest very early on, I would say go for a condenser microphone and also invest in your recording environment to make sure that's set up properly. Okay, next let's look at the difference between USB mics and XLR mics. So USB mics are microphones that you just have one wire that connects straight from the microphone to the computer via USB and it records straight away. The problem with those mics generally is that USB microphones tend to be, not always, but quite often tend to be lower quality than XLR microphones. Now I say not always because there are some XLR microphones that you just should avoid because the quality of the sound is not good. They have a high noise floor, which means the sound that you hear when you're not speaking, just that like blank sound. So that shh sound is a lot higher for some of those microphones, for some microphones um, that are poor quality and probably cheaper. So just bear that in mind. If you, if you want to look at um, the noise level or the noise floor for different microphones when you're buying them and make sure it's got as low as possible. Okay. Now, um, Usually, if you're looking for a good microphone setup to go for, I would say go for an XLR microphone and an audio interface. You can search up what XLR microphones look like. It's about the connection um, at the bottom of the microphone. Um, good, good XLR microphone plus good interface sets you up in a good way for recording. However, if you're tight on a budget, you're tight on money on budget and you're really just starting, I just want to test this out. I would say record with whatever microphone you can get your hands on. The important thing is to start, get practice, because there are other things to practice beyond the equipment. And quite frankly, your equipment is not going to be the major thing that affects your performance. It's going to be more your delivery and the way you deliver your voiceover and your recording environment as well. But having said that, you want to have a good microphone. So make sure that you try and get a microphone, if possible, XLR plus, um, audio interface. If you, so an audio interface, by the way, I'm not sure if I mentioned that earlier, is a box in a sense where you plug in your microphone, you plug your microphone to that box. And then on there, you have a few settings 
for changing gain, changing a few other things, then that box then connects via USB to your computer. And it just gives you more control over the sound and how things sound, um, which you can't really, which you don't really have um, control of with a USB microphone. A USB microphone, in a sense, has the interface built in, but sometimes it's done with lower quality materials such that it doesn't sound as good as if you were using a good XLR microphone. But having said that again, let me just remind you, get started recording. Try not a, if you had a choice between a good USB microphone, that sounds really good, and a bad XLR microphone, go for the good USB microphone. If you had a choice between, if you had a choice to just choose whatever microphone, but good quality, I would go for XLR microphone plus interface at the top. Okay, let's move on. Sound damping, as I mentioned, is to reduce the reflections. Basically, you can see reflections as echoes in your recording environments to make sure you have the best possible recording. It's going to be very difficult to remove that in post, so make sure you try and get it right before you get into, before you record. Okay, now I just want to leave you with a bit of an inspirational quote. You're on your way to greatness, so keep moving, keep making progress. I want you to keep going, keep doing what you're doing, and you'll get there. Remember, practice makes progress, okay? Now, these are the testimonials I'm hoping you're going to have by the end of the time you go ahead and implement some of the stuff we've learned. I'm expecting you to say things like, oh, all right, which is me, um, really helped me with getting started in the field of voiceovers. The course helped you know exactly what to buy and how to get started and things to avoid, which I'd be, I'd be happy to help you with. And then I'm also hoping that the course has been structured in a way that makes it easy to understand and you know what steps you need to take um, in becoming a voiceover artist. And I'm pretty sure you can you can do it. If you put your mind to it and you're ready to put in the work, you'll get there. So there are a few steps I'd like you to do. I'd like you to go on Amazon and create a shopping list of things you need for your voiceover studio. Remember, it doesn't have to be, be the most expensive thing, but I want you to create a shopping list. It shouldn't take you long, maybe 10, 15 minutes, maybe. Um, put something together, take a screenshot of it, and then um, share it with people in this class or with other people you can be accountable to for getting you into voiceover then um, i wanted to mention as well that you can buy used products and in doing so actually you could save quite a bit of money audio products tend to last quite well if you don't deliberately damage them um, so and they, when i say last quite well i'm talking years decades sometimes so it's okay to buy used products but just make sure that you check that they work properly when you get them and you can get a warranty for peace of mind if that helps as well um, at a minimum, buy a microphone um, and audio interface if you're going down the XLR route or a good USB microphone if you're going down the USB route. However, I do have to stress that in the long run, when you're working with many external studios, eventually you're going to reach a point where your XLR, your USB microphone will only take you so far. So if you want to invest um, the right way right from the beginning, you can do. Otherwise, if you want to just have something you can start with and the USB option seems to work better for you, go for that. Then after that, I want you so once you have that in mind, I want you to buy those things that you need to set up. So get your mic stand, get your microphone. Then you've got a to set up a pillow fort. So set up a pillow fort for a booth. I know you could invest and spend more money um, to get you maybe the um, the portable vocal booth or create your own booth at home. I don't want you to do that right now. What I want you to do is just set up a little recording space. Remember, I want you to take action. I don't want the cost of this costing you any more in terms of friction and stopping you from actually going ahead and doing the recordings you need to do. I want you to just go for it and get started. So set up a pillow fort, get a few pillows, set them up, look at a few pictures on uh, Google images, find one that, find a system that works for you and set one up. Okay, take a picture of it, share it with the group as well so we can all give you feedback and then um, know that, okay, once you've bought the things and you've got those things set up, you are good to go. Um, and then long-term, you can then decide what booth you'd like to set up to record in. But for now, you can just start with this. Okay, um, I'm gonna give you some recommendations for equipment you can get uh, on the next slide before we go back to questions. So in terms of microphones, you can get, there are a few really good microphones on the market right now. So you've got the AKG P120. Um, these are all, all these microphones I'm recommending here are XLR microphones, but you can find 
USB microphones as well. For USB, I've, I've heard good things about the Apogee Mic Plus, so you can look that up. But on my list here, we have the AKG P20, which is going for, it's been out for a little while now, so you can get them at good prices, um, even as low as 50 pounds in the UK. Um, you may get them cheaper elsewhere, and you can also keep an eye on eBay to see if any, see what prices come up for those. You've got the AT2020, which I've also heard good things about. You've got the Neat King B, um, the first version and the new version. I currently have the Neat King B2, and it only cost me a few, um, just a, a little bit over a hundred pounds, but it's a really good microphone and it compares quite well to actually some of the higher end, um, better known brands for microphones. So that's one I could recommend. It's quite a bit, it's quite a heavy microphone though, like physically heavy, just, just that I mentioned that, but it's a really good microphone. Then you've got the Rode NT1 and the Rode NT1A. I personally have the Rode NT1A and it's been what I've used for many, many um, clients, many high profile clients. And I find it suits my voice, but the NT1 is also one that um, some people have said, okay, suits them quite well. Then in terms of interfaces, I started off with the Focus, Focusrite Scarlett 2i2 back in the day. Um, I don't know if they still make those ones now, but they do have a Focusrite Solo, which works um, just as well. Focusrite is a good, it's a good brand. Then you've got the Evo 4. I believe the company behind them is Audient. And then you've also got Behringer who have a few audio interfaces as well. So you can, you can check those out. Then in terms of other things like the mic stand and the pop filter and the shock mount. So a shock mount is something you put your microphone in and then put that, that's what you then put in the mic stand. And it's just to make sure that any vibrations on the table or elsewhere don't really get into the recording. Um, you can get generic ones for that. I mean, you can, there are always different levels to them, but I don't have any that I can particularly recommend and say, okay, this is the best or you have to go for this. But you can you can get generic ones. Just make sure you get 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 yourself a working setup and just get it delivered to you and get started. Okay, so those are my recommendations. Again, let me go back to the next step slide. I want you to take a screenshot of this if you don't have it already or if you're not looking at the slides. I want you to go ahead and create your shopping list. So take a screenshot of that then go ahead and buy. Now you may decide not to buy from Amazon, you may decide to buy from other sites as well, or maybe places where you can get them uh, secondhand or used, that's fine too, just get started. Okay, then I want you to go ahead and set up your recording environment, set up your booth, your recording environment, and then I want you to record a before and after. I didn't put that on the slide, but it's very important. I want you to record a before and after, so record record the audio outside of your recording environment and record the audio within your recording environment and see if you can notice any differences. If you're not noticing any differences, you can then send a message to the group and then we can discuss it and see how we can help each other improve. All right, I hope this helped you. I'm looking forward to seeing your assignments being sent in and giving you feedback on them. But yeah, I wish you all the best in your voiceover journey. All right, I will catch you in the next lesson. Take care.